Hey there, SM. When building an API server, having a good API documentation is always something important to do, not only just for reference for your future self, but also your fellow teammates, especially the front end developers. But at the same time, it is a pain in the ass to write API documentation. As a lazy developer, I don't really want to build an API documentation site from scratch. That would be too much work for me. So is there a better way to do this? Well, the answer is hell yes. Otherwise, this video wouldn't exist. There's a wonderful package called Scribe that will do much of the heavy lifting for us. And now let's go to its GitHub repository and learn how we can install the package. Let's go to its documentation. I'll copy the installation command and paste it in our terminal. Once it is done, we'll also publish the config file of this package. And now let's take a look at the config file for a bit. There are quite a few options in the config file that we can customize. Each one of them is commented and they should be quite straightforward. Now there's one particular key that we should be a bit more careful, which is the type configuration. There are two possible values, static and Laravel. If we set it to static, Scrap will simply generate a static HTML page. We use this option when we don't need to apply any extra middleware or routing logic to view the generated documentation. If we set it to Laravel, we'll be able to apply middleware and other logic to the documentation site. For example, restrict access to the documentation site so that only authorized user can view the generated API documentation. For now, we'll just leave it as static. The next thing that you want to be careful of is the match option under the routes configuration. The match option allows us to define which API endpoints that we want to generate the documentation. By default, any routes that has a prefix of API will be included inside the generated documentation. Okay, now let's give it a test run. We'll go to our terminal and run PHP Artisan. Scribe generate. Once that's done, if we go to our public folder, you'll notice that Scribe has created a new folder called docs for us, and inside it contains the source code of the generated documentation. Let's visit the generated HTML page. We'll run our server and visit the documentation site. And we see a beautiful web page with a lot of goodies in it. We can see a quick navigation menu, the main documentation site, and also sample code and sample response. Isn't that neat? Everything that you can see here are customizable. At the moment, our main documentation looks a bit empty. Let's learn how we can add some stuff to it. Currently, all of our API routes falls under the same group called endpoints in the quick navigation menu. It will be better if we can group our resources into their own separate group. Let's go back to our code and see how we can achieve that. Scribe can pick out special directive that we put inside PHP docs. So if we want to group the routes inside our user controller, what we can do is to insert PHP docs on our user controller class and use the add group directive followed by the group name and its description. Once we're done, let's regenerate our API documentation and check out the changes. And now back in the browser, you can see that our users endpoint are now living under the user management group instead of endpoints. All right, let's move on. Let's see how we can add a little bit of description on our get user request here. The first line in the doc block will be the title of the request documentation. And the second line with a line break in between will be the description. And now we know that in this endpoint, we're trying to read an optional request query called page size, which will specify it inside a dot block so that it will be included inside the API documentation. We can do this by using the query param directive, followed by the parameter name and the data type, which in this case will be integer. After the data type, we will put in the description for the query parameter, and we're free to put in anything that we want. Since we're using Laravel paginator, Laravel will also use a page query parameter behind the scene, which will specify which page do we want to view. Let's also put that down. Okay, now we will regenerate our API documentation and see how our query parameter documentation will look like. Let's go back to our browser, hit refresh. And there you go. We've got a nice list of all the query parameters that we specified in a PHP doc block. Now you'll notice that by default, each of the query parameter is optional. If our endpoint has a mandatory query parameter, 
We'll need to specify it inside our PHP docs. Just put in the required keyword right after the data type. Let's regenerate the documentation. And now back inside our browser, the page size query parameter no longer has the optional tag on it. Beautiful. Now let's move on. I'll go ahead and remove the required tag on the page size query parameter because it is not a mandatory field. We can specify an example value to be used in a sample code by using the example keyword right after the description. So for the page size query parameter, I would like to give it an example value of 20. Let's regenerate the documentation and go back to our browser. And as you can see in the sample code, Scribe is using our provided example value for the page size query parameter. We didn't specify any value for the page parameter, so Scribe will randomly assign a random value to it. We didn't see any data in the response because we don't have enough data in our database to account for nine pages of data. So we should really give an example value for the page query parameter. By default, Scribe will interact with our database in order to generate a response to show in the API documentation. This not only applies to the get request, but also the post, patch, and delete request. Behind the scenes, Scribe will try to wrap all database operations within a transaction and roll back the transaction once it is done with the response so that there won't be any persistent changes in our database. Although this is safe for most of the time, there's still a chance that something will go wrong and the changes are persisted in our database. How do we solve this? Well, there are two solutions. One is to get Scribe to use a different database when it is generating the API documentation. To do that, we can create a new.env file and call it .env.docs. And this .env file will point us to a different database that Scribe will use. And to get Scribe to use this .env file, we'll need to specify it at the time when we run the PHP Artisan command by supplying the double dash env flag, followed by the postfix of our .env file, which in our case here will be docs. Now this method will work fine. However, we'll need to create a separate database instance just for Scribe to interact with. The second method, which I think is a better way, is to use another Scribe directive to specify which response that we are returning in this endpoint. We are returning back a resource collection and the directive is called API resource collection. So when Scribe sees this directive, it will not interact with our database, but instead it will attempt to generate a response by looking inside our resource class and use our model factory to generate the fields. Right after the directive, we will need to specify the namespace to our resource class. And on a new line, we also need to specify the model that we want Scribe to load inside our resource class, which in our case here will be our user model. All right, let's test it out. We'll go back to our terminal. And just to prove that this is working, we will clear the database and regenerate the API documentation. And now back inside our browser, we can see that we still got a response inside the API documentation, even though our database is now empty. Beautiful. Now let's move on to the show request. The show request has a URL parameter, which is the ID of the user that we want to get specifically. By default, Scribe can automatically pick it up. However, if we want to customize the description, we can use the directive URL param to overwrite the default documentation. Let's regenerate the documentation. Whoops, I made a mistake. The URL parameter name should be ID, not user. Let's try that again. And it works. Now currently the response is a mess. Let's fix this. This time the endpoint is showing a specific user. It's no longer a resource collection. So we'll be using the API resource directive. And similar as before, we'll pass in the namespace for our user resource class. And we also need to specify the resource model. Let's give it a go. And the response is now showing correctly. Great, let's move on to the store endpoint. Now the store endpoint is a post request. That means we're gonna deal with request body. And to specify the request body, we'll use a directive code body param in a doc block. Our user store request contains two fields, name and email. Let's specify them inside our doc block. The directive that we need is code body param. And the structure of it is pretty much the same as query param. So after the directive, we'll put down the field name, the data type, 
the required keyword, description, and example. The store endpoint will return the created user, so we also need to specify the API resource directive, which I'll simply copy and paste from the show endpoint. Let's try it out. We'll regenerate our API documentation, go back to the browser, and the response is showing correctly. And we'll do the same for the update endpoint. And also the delete endpoint. For the delete endpoint, we are returning a custom JSON response here. So we can no longer use the API resource directive. Instead, we need to use the response directive where we can manually define the structure of the API response. We can also specify the HTTP response code right after the directive. All right, let's test our code, regenerate our API documentation, and back in the browser, we can see our update endpoint and delete endpoint are showing with the correct response. And that is pretty much it. This is a quick overview on how to work with the scribe library and how it can help us to easily generate API documentation. The library has a lot of other features that we can't cover all of them in one single video. I highly recommend you to check out their documentation. The link is in the description. We still need to write the documentation for our comment and post resource. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Again, the solution will be in the project repository. And also one more thing before we end the lesson, Scribe will also generate Postman collection for our convenience. If you want to see all your endpoints in Postman, simply import the collection.json file that it generates inside the docs folder. All right, key takeaway for this lesson, Scribe is an amazing package that helps us to generate API documentation in a beautiful web page. We use the add directive in PHP docs to provide details about our API endpoints. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.